a brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. In recent times, Father Rice has gained popularity in Nigeria and beyond. It is now widely cultivated while attracting other key service areas in the family industry. What is oh, Father Rice cultivation has been part of our agriculture in Ogun State since time immemorial. Grown in subsistence, it was scarce. Nevertheless, Due to concerted efforts by farmers in recent times, it became readily available in the market. Government involvement at every stage of production has also taken the crop to industrial level. Some people give their opinions on the state of father rice production in Ogun State today. When you have young people who are ready to produce, or when you have industries who have established meal without farm, that we're talking about industrialization, industrial opportunity. So a good number of optakers are cleaned up to purchase a father rice paddy from open farmers. And people um, were also keen into agricultural opportunity, direct investment, uh, uh, foreign and foreign, local and national uh, investment in agriculture. And some of these people, they're actually into establishment of rice meal. Some of them want to fill, fill their meal with offered rice. We also have a project we are doing, I fight federal government projects, um, and they're also supporting young people into growing offered rice. So we're growing rice in eight local government areas in the state. Because our farmers have not been adopting good agronomic practices, that has denied them the reward of having higher yields on their father farm. Uh, good agronomic practices are deployed a father rice can also yield as much as three to four tons in an upland area and more than that in lowland area. We have different offers that people are doing from different states. The real offer is from Ogun State and we have it and we are bold enough to tell you we have offer gold. We have two types of offer. There is offer white offer and gold offer. This one we planted is all good, of other good. When you, even people that have diabetes, they even rush. Doctor told, used to tell them that they should go for a father instead of those white one. Perhaps with more efforts in of other rice production, the Gateway State has a future among states contributing to Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings in the world of agriculture. I never get this kind of thing, or I hear it. Somebody called me that there is a farm that people are feeling. I should go and fill. Then I went there, she gave me one, I filled the farm. We are three in number, they're working together. Um, we got form from federal government. After two weeks, I received a lot of 30,000 naira from federal government. I used the 30,000 naira to buy so many things like equipment.
Good evening and thanks for joining us on Nationwide Today. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Nigeria has pledged continued support for the African peer review mechanism process in the country in view of its tremendous benefits to good governance and democracy. President Mohamed Buhari gave the assurance at the formal launch of the second self-assessment report of the country in flag off of the validation exercise across the six geopolitical zones of the country. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. President Muhammad Buhari presents Nigeria's self-assessment report to members of the lead panel to formally kickstart the second review mission in the country. This is the first African peer review mechanism member state in West Africa to undertake the exercise aimed at promoting good governance and socio-economic development. This exercise will be a strong reference point in the nation's history, a source of courage and positive drive for the initiative that is aimed at consolidating the strides of this present administration. This administration has been very supportive and will continue to support the African review mechanism process in Nigeria, knowing the importance of the process, which enhances transparency and good governance, strengthens our democracy, identifies and addresses critical challenges as well as promotes all inclusiveness. Describing the review as timely and handy, President Buhari says the APRM process is an attempt to build on and seek accelerated implementation of continental initiatives aimed at achieving the Africa we want. I urge us all to deliberate and come up with more vital strategies, mechanisms and measures that would enable diligent implementation of the new national program of action for accelerated economic growth and sustainable development in Nigeria and Africa. The lead panel member for the country review mission, Dr. Abdulli Jane, appreciates Nigeria for braving itself to be reviewed despite the COVID-19 pandemic, which he says is further proof of the country's commitment to the APRM process. We applaud your ongoing efforts, your tirelessly ongoing efforts, Mr. President, to combat corruption. However, Mr. President, the issue of, of insecurity continues to be a major challenge. We have no doubt that Nigeria will overcome these unprecedented challenges under your able leadership. The national coordinator, Aouda Nepat Nigeria, Gloria Okobundu, salutes President Muhammad Buhari for his transparency, courageous leadership, consenting to the conduct of the country's second review mission and consistency in achieving the desired goals. Mr. President, sir, we cannot thank you enough for the trust reposed on us and the governing council of APRM to coordinate this great project. The agency will leave no stone unturned to ensure that a smooth process is attained with the kind continuous support of our dynamic president. The second review mission is expected to be concluded on the 20th of this month, after which the report will be drafted for presentation to the heads of state and government in the APRM Forum Summit due to hold early next year. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed the need for all strategic institutions to collaborate towards securing the nation's territory. The president and I delivered by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju. At the inauguration of the Falcon Eye System project of the Nigerian Navy says the administration has demonstrated in various ways its determination to the safety of the country. Details of this report will come in our subsequent bulletin. President Mohamed Buhari has transmitted the 2022 to 2024 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper to the Senate for consideration. 
The documents have been referred to as Senate Joint Committee for Scrutiny with Committee on Finance as Lib Committee. Meanwhile, Senate has confirmed the appointment of five nominees as commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission. This followed the consideration of the report of Senate Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission, which screened the presidential nominees. Professor Mohamed Kala, Northeast, Professor Kunle Ajay, Southwest, Sayyid Muhammad, Northwest, Dr. Bala, Dr. Baba Bila, Northeast, and Professor Ab Abdullahi Zuru, Northwest. It stepped down the confirmation of Professor Sani Adam for further investigation on petitions received against him, while that of Loretta Onoche was rejected on grounds of federal character principle, as Delta State already has May Agbamuche Umbu as commissioner in INEC. Confirmed, but May Agbamuche Umbu from Delta State is a national commissioner in INEC of INEC, who is still serving at present. Therefore, confirming the nomination of Mrs. Loretta Onochi from the same Delta State will be a violation of federal character principles. That these nominees are not representing states. They are national commissioners representing geopolitical zones, that, even though it's not in the constitution, but they are picked from certain parts of the country. Now to education. The Joint Admission and Matriculations Board says parental aided examination malpractice is one of the emerging challenges faced by the board. Jump Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyede stated this during an oversight by the Senate Committee on Education, Basic and Secondary to the board's headquarters. Dayo Umshola reports. Issues relating to the conduct of the examination dominated the discussion. Jump Registrar, Professor Isaac Oluede, highlighted the emerging challenges facing the board. Top must include undue influence from parents, activities of dubious CBT centers, and indiscipline in admission process among some higher institutions. Examination malpractice, not in terms of students. Examination malpractice in terms of parents. Because they are the greatest problem. They are intrusion, particularly the mothers. Most of the problems we have, most of them are by mothers who want their children to either be lawyers or doctors at all costs. Members of the committee in their assessment observed that basic education is an essential foundational base. Thus, Jump's role as quality assurance check is very important. What we have seen as a committee oversighting this um, board, the agency, if this continues, definitely the educational sector in this nation will be improved. The committee assured the board of its legislative support to address other emerging issues. In Abuja, Dayo Gunshola. NT News. Talking security, the House of Representatives is proposing the setup of a special unit under the mobile police to undergo special training and onward deployment of 1,000 each to all states of the Federation to combat insecurity. This formed part of recommendations submitted by the House Special Committee on National Security, chaired by the Speaker Femi Majabiamela. The House also suggested the creation of a new team under the Niger Police Force that would be trained to work with guards of Niger's forest. Other recommendations considered and adopted include the possible use of private defense contractors for targeted security operations such as insurgency and terrorism. The report, which is the outcome of the Summit on National Security organized by the House of Representatives, is to be forwarded to the executive for implementation. The House had to intervene and intervene, think outside the box, and intervene in ways that could assist or support the government of the day and the executive in providing solutions to what had become a very difficult situation in Nigeria. And in other news, Brown State Government is partnering Industrial Training Fund to empower youths through skills acquisition as part of efforts to address insecurity in the Northeast region. This was the fallout of a visit by Governor Babagana Zulum to ITF in Abuja. Musa Abubakar reports. 
Looking for alternative solution to security challenges for his state and region is the priority of Governor Baba Ganazulum at this visit to the Industrial Training Fund Office in Abuja. The visit is to seek partnership with the Manpower Training Agency to develop and empower youths in various skills to make them more engaged in productivity for development of the society. We are here to understand the entire system, to see how we can ensure establishment of veritable and sustainable technical and vocational education. That means we are looking into their curriculum. After observing the curriculum, we'll also observe their module and see how we can get a complete package. When we train the, the children, we shall provide them with some starter packs so that they shall be on their own. Uh, this partnership will also address the issues of restiveness, youth restiveness in the Northeast, as well as provide means of employable skills for them to even be self-sufficient. They believe the partnership is part of efforts that will provide a long-term solution to the effects of insecurity in the country, in addition to addressing it. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. Early and first marriage, street hawking, lack of awareness as well as low self-esteem have been identified as some of the major obstacles hindering the girl child from real realizing her God-given talent and potential. As part of measures towards surmounting these challenges, 360 girls have been trained on life skills in Bauch State. Bolak Afsat reports. Do not born crippled, 16-year-old Fidel Sassani from Bidiri in Katagum local government area, became crippled when she was six years old and has since been confined on a wheelchair. Her dreams, she said, was shattered due to her condition, but the three weeks training has helped rekindle her desire to get an education. Habib Asani, Najaat Abubakar, and Salomi Elkana are part of the 360 girls that were trained on life skills and they narrate their learning experience. I had the intention to stop my education at GSS3, but with the training I have learned persevere and I'm determined. I learned how to care with myself, my personal hygiene and environmental. The training is specifically meant for adolescents between the ages of 12 to 19 was geared towards equipping the girls with life skills on discovering themselves, personal hygiene, environmental hygiene, entrepreneurship and gender-based violence among others. Country Director Mennonite Economic Development Associate MIDA Mrs. Grace Forsen said her organization envisages a world where girls and women will be equipped to realize their dreams and contribute their quota to nation building. Traditional dances and presentation by the graduating girls added color to the event. In Bunchi, Bulak Afsa, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide the NTA. Time to head to Lagos, where King Day is standing by with some reports for us. Hello, Elizabeth. Certification of trucks for meeting the minimum safety standard is now a requirement for accessing the ports in Lagos. The initiative collaboration between the Nigerian Port Authority and the Federal Road Safety Corps is not just about limiting the addressing the road traffic crashes, but also eliminating gridlock along the corridor. Malcolm Olale reports. At the heart of most accidents in Lagos is a deviant truck questionable for violating guidelines. In April this year, Kadijat was a victim of an articulated vehicle which discharged its contents on an approaching car. She survived to tell the tales, but not too many are so fortunate. In fact, the count is endless and they stimulated the aggressive implementation of the minimum safety standards by the Federal Safety Corps. If you look at our checklist of assessment, it's categorized into three stages to enable us to assess these vehicles properly. The first stage is visibility. Visibility talks about the ability of the vehicle to see and be seen. While the FRSC is still reflecting on its near success in reducing the rate of road carnage, 
caused by articulated trucks, the port community is incorporating SIM as precondition for trucks to be captured under the electronic call-up system. The Nigerian Post Authority's instinct is guided by the danger a field truck constitutes to the environment. We need to make it uh, uh, very efficient, not just about um, deployment of infrastructure. We also need to ensure that everything is energized in such a way that you must have the right truck that is safe, confirmed to be safe, and if it is not safe, we'll tell you what is wrong with it. That's the only way to get the trucks faster. Now, if you have the cranes at the ports being able to pick the containers and load them on the trucks, the trucks are breaking down all over the place, you are still going to have the same congestion issues. This strategy is viewed as the much needed solution to the gridlock within the port community, while efforts are on to generate more strategies to beef. Of its documents, the chief clerks to equip them with rudiments of modern day clerical work. For the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, who was represented, the training will contribute to the actualization of his vision for the Nigerian army. The workshop is meant to encourage the exchange of experiences and methods of conducting, coordinating your office towards identifying problems and finding solutions to challenges faced in the course of discharging your responsibilities. General Officer Commanding 81 Division believes that the training will make participants stronger administrative pillars of their various formations and units. Chief clerks are expected to be robust, endowed with quick thinking, analytical, and armed with problem-solving skills and, indeed, foresight. At the end of the training, participants are expected to be more proactive, effective, and efficient in discharging their duties for better document security and information management in the Nigerian army. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. You're still watching Nationwide on a network service of the NTA. We'll take a short break now. Nationwide continues afterwards with Sadia in Sokoto. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamadou Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. The future belongs to those who leverage on digital innovations. Digital PS International presents Digitest Online 2021, an online summer camp that brings ages 8 to 18 together across Nigeria, Canada, US, and more countries. Team Digital Skills Pathway to Prosperity, date 8 to 16 August 2021. At Digitest, kids and teens will unearth their potential to create digital products with possibilities of making profits online. Participation will be virtual with few physical non-residential at the Digital Center Abuja and we all enjoy a level playing field to compete with students across the globe. Lots of prizes to be won. Give your kids an opportunity of a lifetime today for only 5,000 Naira for virtual and 20,000 Naira for physical. To register, visit our website at www.digitalkeys.org slash digitestonline2021 or call 080-77-82-3307 or 080-77-82-3308. Edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State. Since assuming office, our rescue administration has pursued the path of peace and reconciliation and restored confidence among people of different ethnic, religious, and political persuasions. Peace is back on the plateau. We are building world class infrastructure in roads, schools, 
hospitals, water, energy, and opening up opportunities for innovation, entrepreneurship, and job creation for thousands of our youth through quality education. The edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure ranging from entertainment, economy, sports, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up a copy and keep abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and competitive. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, put in your best. The military years were a disaster. Smoldering effects of all that is what we are trying to cure. Thanks for staying with us on Nationwide and welcome to Sokoto. Governor Amin Wazir Tambol has passionately appealed to the National Assembly to give INEC the prerogative of introducing electronic transmission of votes in the subsequent elections in the country. Tambol, who made the appeal while addressing media men at NUJ Press Center, Sokoto called on the National Assembly to see the electronic transmission as a right thing to do. Alhat Abdullahi has the report. Tambol said he was constrained to add his voice only to appeal to the National Assembly as a Nigerian citizen and former Speaker of the House of Representatives. He believed that it is in the national interest to bequeath to Nigerians an electoral act that can guarantee free, fair, and credible elections that will ensure voters decide any electoral contest. Tambol argued that INEC has tested the electronic transmission of votes in Edo and Ondo states' elections and the wishes of the voters were accurately respected, with APC winning in Ondo and PDP cleared in Edo. In any case, INEC has demonstrated and assured that it had the technology to transmit votes electronically even without the internet service. INEC had also assured that with the new process and technology, any interested Nigerian could track or monitor the results of the election from his or her house. Tambol noted that election stakeholders that include INEC, the international community, the civil society, and the political parties are in support of the electronic transmission of votes, asking the lawmakers to be guided by the wishes of their constituents as arbiters in any democratic movement. In Sakwatu, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, Chief Magistrate. Chief Magistrate Court 1, Sokoto, has convicted Mr. and Mrs. Emmanuel Basi, the guardians of 12-year-old Joy caged in Sokoto on a four-count charge. Shehu Muhammad Detti reports that two female children of the Basi family were, however, granted bail on the sum of 500,000 naira with one shorty. The report. The Basi family were convicted by the Magistrate Court 1 for criminal conspiracy, wrongful confinement, cruelty to child, and attempts to commit homicide to Joy, who they caged and stabbed for eight months. Mr. Emmanuel Basi and his wife Esther were convicted by the Magistrate Court on four count charge. For the offense of criminal conspiracy, the defendants are to pay a fine of 25,000 naira or six months in correctional center. For wrongful confinement, they are to pay a fine of 50,000 naira. In default, spend 12 months in correctional center. For cruelty to child, they were sentenced to 12 months with a fine of 100,000 naira 
or spent three years in a correctional center for an attempt to commit homicide, the defendants are to serve same punishment as in the third offense. Two daughters of the Emmanuels, goodness and happiness, were however granted bail on the sum of 500,000 naira. The couple were prosecuted by SP Samuel Suli on 21st of June 2021 for caging and stabbing Joy, a scenario that met the Sokota State Commissioner of Police to visit the house himself and ordered the arrest of the guardians, Mr. and Mrs. Emmanuel Vasi. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And that's it from here. It's now back to Ruth in Abuja. He said here. President Mohamed Buhari says Nigeria will offer the best support possible towards ensuring that the Republic of Cameroon remains an indivisible country. This was while receiving an audience, Mr. Felix Mbayu, a special envoy from President Paul Bia of Cameroon. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. Nigeria and Cameroon, President Muhammadu Buhari says, share historical ties and common borders which make it imperative for the two countries to look out for each other's well-being. His administration, he explains, is very clear about the value of good neighborliness and will therefore remain steadfast at ensuring a stable Cameroon. Cameroon, which offered Nigeria the needed support during the civil war, is now being confronted by separatist agitation spearheaded by Ambazonian movement. The federal government, he promised, is committed to ensuring an indivisible Cameroon, a tax he believes is also in the greater interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. Mr. Felix Mbayu, who is also the minister-designate in charge of cooperation with the Commonwealth, said President Bia is happy with the role Nigeria continues to play in Africa noting that the two neighboring countries share not just borders and historical ties, but also common challenges. These challenges border on particularly security, and as he explained, it is incumbent on the two countries to find common solutions. The special envoy said President Bia looked forward to a situation in which Nigerian territory would not be available for the Ambazonian movement to destabilize Cameroon, as some people are taking advantage of some crises in the two English-speaking parts of Cameroon to break the country apart. He congratulated Nigeria on the recent arrest and repatriation of Namdikanu, leader of the prescribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP, through the collaboration of some national security agencies and the Interpol. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. In peace and nation building for Nigeria to reduce ethnic and religious differences and promote good governance, the youth must be groomed to embrace peace in all spheres as a create for inclusion in government. This was the message of the National Organizing Committee of the National Youth Peace Summit as it solicited media support for their forthcoming youth summit. The acting director news, Halima Musa, received the five member group on behalf of the director general of the NTA. Population projections by the United Nations for 2020 reveal that 62% of the Nigerian population are below 25 years. This indicates that a larger population of the country are youth and their yearnings for inclusion in governance and national development cannot be ignored. Considering the contributions of the youth to nation building, organizers of the National Youth Peace Summit are strategizing on how to sustain peace and unity in the country, and this necessitated the visit to the NTA. We are striving to contribute our quarter to the development of peace in Nigeria. We would also ask that the management will support the coverage of the opening and uh, closing ceremonies of the event. We shall also appreciate the presence of the Director General as we intend to bestow on him a special recognition honors by the National Youth Peace Summit as a distinguished youth and bus ambassador. The acting director news reminded the group that the NTA is committed to fostering peace and such efforts are appreciated. Anything that uh, would uh, restore peace and consolidate peace in Nigeria is worthy of uh, support. So I would like to restate the commitment of the NTA to all efforts aimed at 
restoration of peace where necessary and consolidation of peace where necessary. As a worthy cause, the acting director news assured the group of utmost support in the success of the forthcoming summit. No Nigerian will be left out in all national projects that are embarked upon by the federal government, as the Federal Character Commission shall continue to ensure sense of belonging and representation of the people in the scheme of things. Chairman of the Commission, Dr. Mohiba Dankaka, said this while addressing federal commissioners from the entire federation in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. Nigeria rated the most populous country in Africa with an estimated 200 million people with various religious, ethnic and cultural diversities which no doubt make it unique. Towards the sustainability of national cohesion, the Federal Character Commission was established 22 years ago to ensure all inclusive governance in the country. We appreciate Mr. President. Chairman of the Commission, Dr. Muhiba Dankaka, said the organization remains a pivotal institution of great magnitude towards strengthening national unity, which they must lead by example. We shall continue to pursue this mandate with all the vigor and the constitutional provision as provided in our acts. The Commission will bring out deliberate policies to make its own contribution to national discourse that promote peace and unity in the country. The executive chairman said the commission is getting needed support from President Muhammadu Buhari and meeting the yearning and aspirations of all Nigerians is the only way to show their appreciation. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The National Population Commission is harmonizing its stations of data collation and reviving its library with a target of producing an integrity-based data for all users as well as for national planning and growth. This was part of the thrust of a two-day capacity building for the Commission's staff on library management and development in Abuja, Odushe Adiabu reports. By its nature of being a demographic agency, meeting the data needs of all end users, National Population Commission is seeking to ensure a robust population quality for national transformation by making its library collection a verifiable source of information. But managing these vital materials and data is set to take a new shape as the Commission is engaging managers of the National Library to help equip its manpower on library management and development. This is as a result of the need for the Commission to have a well-established library, a modernized, automated, and digital library that will be able to serve not only the Commission, but the external public. The NPC is reaffirming the Commission's target of not just providing evidence-based information as well as data for formulation and implementation of a dynamic population intervention activities, but also adequately maintaining them for futuristic references. The Commission has over the years uh, striven to maintain a functional, efficient and accessible library that can complement the basic mandate of the Commission. If you don't have records of what you have done in the past, then it's as good as lost and resources wasted on training and gathering all those data. In Abuja, Ulusheye Adiago, NTA News. Time to stop by in Enogo and Chinenye will be our guide. Hello, Chinenye. Hello, Elizabeth. Welcome to Enugu. Enugu State Government is partnering some investors to revitalize moribund agricultural investments in the state. Discussing the possibilities with the state government, Special Advisor to the CBN Governor, Mr. Tony Fechuku, said the APS Bank is keen on ensuring that states become economically viable. Susan Eze has the details. The Oye, Ezeago, and Ojo River Keshu, and the Uguamu Ibitolo oil palm plantations, among other investments, were once upon a time the major economic mainstay of the old eastern region. 
These now moribund agro industries are the business interests of the investors revitalizing these state owned agro business enterprises. The investors believe will facilitate the much needed accelerated growth, expansion, and development of the state and national economy. The team hopes to strike a deal with the Enugu state government to make these moribund plantations viable again. The state government, on its part, assured the investors of a memorandum of understanding, MOU, that will be a win-win situation for all parties concerned. Uh, as I said earlier, we are going to look all within our powers to make sure that what's good for the person bringing his money is also good for the state, who is also contributing some other aspects of the development and there to be enjoyed by the people of the United States. The team had earlier visited some of the plantations in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. Selecting individuals with proven integrity as well as adopting transparent processes in all party affairs is the way to go for the All Progressives Congress, APC, in a bid to produce credible representatives in Enugu West senatorial zone. Key players in the zone agreed on these principles at a meeting convened in Enugu by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama. Ukeria Ugu has more. The stakeholders agreed that to come to terms with the realities on ground, apportioning of blame is not necessary, but to fashion a roadmap for inclusive and peaceful leadership. Ideally, democracy is all about people. Hence, the party faithful believe people be allowed to elect leaders who can make sacrifices for the interests of the masses. All progressive Congress should have a unity of peoples, devoid of division and individual ambition, they said. There was um, unanimity, complete agreement, that on this occasion, we want to look at the, 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 the history, the character, and uh, integrity of each individual before we select them to run for any position. Deliberating on ways to move the party forward and to win election in the state, key players drawing from their wealth of experiences suggested that the party should start on a clean slate by doing away with group and individual ambitions, disallowing leaders of various factions from contesting, but giving brand new faces opportunity to lead without godfathers. For us to win election, we must change. We let everybody participate. The members from Enugu West Senatorial Zone comprises party faithful from Ogu, Aniri, Oji River, Ezago, and Udi local government areas. They demonstrated their eagerness to form a formidable force in readiness for the forthcoming party one and state congresses in July and August 2021. In Enugu, Ukeria Ogu, NTA News. And those are the stories from Enugu Nationwide Continues with Fatima in Makodi after this commercial break this day. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources, and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground and together let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The Petroleum Industry Bill and its prospects for Nigeria. What are the critical issues involved? Find out on the NTA Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, every week at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Join us. Your kids are smart. 
Your kids are creative. Your kids are business savvy. Now they get a chance to prove it and maybe even start their own business. The goal of the Emergent Africa competition is to raise a new breed of industrialists. Upload a video of your child pitching a business idea or showcasing an existing business to get a chance to enter the three-week boot camp where final winners will emerge. Admission is free. Age range is 10 to 17 years. Entry is open June 28, 2021 and ends July 17, 2021. Bootcamp opens August 8 and ends August 28, 2021. For more information, visit our website www.tacompetition.org Our Facebook page, TA Competition Our Instagram, The Emergent Africa For inquiries and sponsorship, call 0803-545-8855 or 0817-678-8284 the broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA TV College Joss invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Basic directing techniques, date 2nd August to 27th August 2021, 4 weeks. New technologies, optical fiber, IP technologies, automation storage management and wireless technology, date 9th August to 13th August 2021, 1 week. Transmitter operation and maintenance, date 23rd August to 27th August 2021, one week. Advanced broadcast accounting and auditing, date 30th August to 24th September 2021, four weeks. Emotional intelligence for workplace efficiency, date 6th September to 17th September 2021, two weeks. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant. The fee for the two-week course is 80,000 Naira. While the course fee for the one-week course is 60,000 Naira only, accommodation inclusive, the venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. <laughs> and welcome to Makudi. The Judicial Panel of Inquiry into Human Rights Violation by the Police, a special, the Special, special Anti-Robbery Squad SARS, has rounded off its sitting in Benue State a month ahead of its target date. Godwin Inalibu reports that 72 petitions were received as recommendations and the cases will be forwarded to the state government for onward transmission to the federal government. The Judicial Panel of Inquiry into Human Rights Violations by the Police was set up by the federal government in 2020 across the states of the Federation to look into the level of brutality meted to Nigerians as alleged by the NSAS protesters with a view to addressing them. On October 15, 2020, the Benue State inaugurated the Judicial Panel of Inquiry in the state to ascertain the level of complicity of the police violation of human rights with a view to make recommendations to the federal government. The panel, which was expected to conclude its sitting within six months, however, had challenges as the judiciary staff workers went on an indefinite strike, thus truncating the initial deadline of April 15. However, following the call-off of the strike, in May 2021, the Benue State Government granted a two-month extension to the panel to round off its sitting. Of the 72 complaints filed before the panel, 10 were defended, while nine cases were struck out for lack of jurisdiction and interest in the matter. Chairman of the panel, Justice Adam Onum, says the decisions taken on the remaining petitions will be submitted to the state government at the expiration of its tenure, which is on August 15, 2021. Petitioners express the hope that justice will prevail in their matter. In Makudi, Godwin, in Alibu, NTA News. Belgian ambassador to Nigeria, Daniel Bertrand, has pledged the willingness of the country to enter into a bilateral relationship with Benue State to transform agriculture and to foster peace. He made the pledge during his visit to the state. Charles Abba reports. The Belgian ambassador, Daniel Bertrand, who acknowledged the various security challenges being faced in Benway State, decried the menace, saying he was in Benway to have a first-hand information and to carve out ways of assisting the state in fostering peace. 
The ambassador further stated that with the understanding that Benue has comparative advantage in agriculture, Belgium's international organizations, Saint Egidio, will be used as a channel of transforming agricultural activities in the state and engage in other economic ventures. Uh, we have um, many um uh, high-tech agricultural companies in, in Belgium specialize in transformation of agricultural products. Maybe it, it could be a good opportunity. Deputy Governor Benson Abonu, who welcomed the Belgian ambassador to Benue, described Benue as a peace-loving state with hard-working people, especially in farming. He said the state is blessed with various natural resources and huge potentials that Belgium can take advantage of and invest in. We have a region that is uh, very fertile because here yeah, most, most crops can even grow without fertilizer because of the fertile nature of our land. And so we would want to engage with you in the field of agriculture and in the field of investment and trading. The deputy governor explained that although the state has continued to weather the storms of criminality, government has remained focused in providing dividends of democracy to the people. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Makudi. Nationwide continues in Abuja with Elizabeth. Thank you, Fatima. President Mohamed Buhari has expressed a need for all strategic institutions to collaborate towards securing the nation's territory. The president, in a message delivered by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo at the inauguration of the Falcon Ice System Project of the Nigerian Navy, says the administration has demonstrated in various ways its determination to the safety of the country. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. The Falcon Ice System is a state of the art surveillance facility that incorporate various sensors located along the nation's enormous coastline, such as radars, long-range electro-optic systems with thermal or night vision capability. The Falcon Eye system will serve as a force multiplier for the nation's naval platforms tasked to effectively secure the maritime environment. It will also enable the Nigerian Navy to effectively combat any maritime crime that could disrupt the conduct of maritime trade. So given our economic aspirations and our commitment to international trade, ensuring the security of shipping lanes within the proximate uh, waters is in our national interest. It is estimated that Nigeria loses about $26.3 billion annually to various forms of criminality, particularly piracy and sea robbery. The Buhari administration, he says, has demonstrated a clear commitment to building the capacity of strategic institutions to secure coastal waters and the precincts of the country's maritime neighborhood. The federal government has significantly increased our national capabilities in the area of maritime surveillance and criminal interdiction within our territorial waters. It is clear that this administration has invested substantial resources in steadily building our sovereign capacity for total spectrum dominance of our maritime environment. And on behalf of um, uh, Mr. President, I wish to urge all the relevant strategic institutions and stakeholders to collaborate in the pursuit of this all-important endeavor in the national interest. The Vice President commended the officers, men and women of the Nigerian Navy for their service in various theaters and expressed gratitude of the nation and the resolute support of the administration. From the naval headquarters in Abuja, Jide Onifade, NT News. And our defense correspondent, Najat Tijani, takes a look at the Falcon Eye multi-layer surveillance system designed specifically for Nigeria's peculiar maritime security climate at the naval headquarters in Abuja, with the national security advisor and other key players in the defense and security sector in attendance. Being at the forefront of Nigeria's defense and security architecture, these key players are about to mark another milestone in the sector, this time in Nigeria's maritime domain. Primarily meant to enhance the Nigerian Navy's operations with a lot of successes already recorded in reducing criminality within the maritime domain. 
Additionally, the over-the-horizon Falcon Eye system will leverage modern technology to enhance and safeguard Nigeria's hydrocarbon and mineral resources. Of the satellite aspects of the automatic identification system of Falcon Eye alignment extends beyond Nigerian waters to Cote d'Ivoire at the west, Cameroon at the east, and Angola at the southeast. This significant capability enhances the maritime projection capabilities of the country and enables the Nigerian Navy to maintain strategic partnership on information sharing. The intelligence system gives the Nigerian Navy unique capabilities for detecting suspicious targets within the EZ as well as real-time intelligence analysis. Like the bird of prey, which it is named after, the Falcon Eye Project has at, as its motto from detection to interception because it gives a bird's eye view of criminal activities. Not only that, having state-of-the-art equipment designed to spot and intercept criminal activities in the maritime domain, including the Gulf of Guinea and Nigeria's exclusive economic zone using state-of-the-art equipment such as this one and giving a bird's eye view of the areas of interest to not only intercept criminals but also effect safety and rescue operations. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. Thank you, Naja Atu. In order to encourage the growth of the Nigeria automotive industry, the federal government has directed that all vehicles to be purchased under the approved federal government budget should be procured locally from local assembly manufacturers. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Hamid, stated this during the inauguration of the automobile assembly plants in Newe and Ambra State in Demkalo, Texas. More. The minister, who was in company of the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, were conducted around the facilities to get first-hand information on what is being manufactured locally in the automotive industry. The minister commended President Muhammad Buhari for encouraging and supporting local manufacturing in Nigeria to assist in creating jobs and boosting the growth of the economy. She added that the ministry has put in place a vehicle registration portal to ensure that all vehicles imported or manufactured locally is captured in a central database. Mr. President has directed Sophie to harness optimally the benefits of the regional integration under the ECOWAS as well as the African Continental Free Trade Area, the AFCFT. The commissioning of this plan further underscores the focus of the management of the European vehicle towards supporting the federal government's industrialization agenda, job creation aspirations, and campaign for local content development. This great company has demonstrated immense strength in the Nigerian economy. From Newi, Ndamkalo, NTN News. Let's now talk sports with Olumide Egontola. Nigeria's D Tigers continued their outstanding performances ahead of the Olympics with another resounding victory over their counterparts from Argentina. The Mike Brown to third side humbled the Argentines 94 to 71 points in Las Vegas Monday night. There's hope now, there's assurance. We've seen our team and we're willing to make that statement now. The Tigers earlier defeated Team USA for the first time in history Sunday morning. Back home in Lagos, Nile University as a match champion of the NBBF National Division 1 Basketball League, which ended Monday evening at the National Stadium Lagos. Nile University beat Evan Comments, who were beaten since the commencement of the league, 74 to 62 points. But it shows that uh, students can actually play basketball at the same time go to school and achieve their dreams. I also believe that by the time they get to the Premier League, these two teams, Ebu Comet and uh, Nile University, are going to really uh, give the other people a run for their money. In the third place match, Yobe Warriors defeated Abu Kings 79 to 69 points. In football, the first stage of the Mini Football Nations Cup ongoing in Ibadan, or your state capital, will be concluded tonight ahead of the knockout stage. Nigerian Spartan Eagles are promised to remain focused on winning the tournament's trophy. The Nigerian lads qualify for the knockout stage after beating Zambia 3 goes to 2. Because it's qualified for the quarter final, I believe the trophy is the best. That is our focus. We remain focused. I remain to score more goals for my country. In volleyball, as the ongoing Nigeria Volleyball Premier League in Ilori gets to day six, the Nigeria Customs Service men and women teams are leading others 
The management of the service has reiterated its commitment and support for the teams in making them one of the best volleyball teams in Africa. And I expect from them to do so well in the first phase so that by the time we go for the final phase, it will be something like a walkover for us. Meanwhile, the seven fixtures indicate that Kada Queens will face Benue Queens, among other matches in the female category, while Nigeria Custom Service will take on Sunshine Spikers in the male event. With sports updates, Olumide Guntola. NT News. And sports update with Automedia Gunsola and Nationwide today. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, the campaign against rape and rapists is still on.